uh, we used to do that. Okay, so I already mentioned a few of these things. I'm also into hobbyist stuff. Um, I actually only brought about, this is probably about 10% of the junk that's kicking around my apartment. I just moved here. Um, there's a lot more stuff arriving. So maybe on one of the um, install days or something like that, I'll bring down a few more interesting and more expensive devices that I can keep an eye on that we can play around with. So that's the end of the talk. And if anyone afterwards wants to come up here and you know try out one of these gadgets and get them hooked up and play around for a few minutes, then that's fine. Just before we go to questions, I will just mention, if you want to play around for yourself, this is called a black fin. This is from Analog Devices. So those guys are based here um, in Boston. And these are under 100 bucks for a board you can buy, have at home. It comes with the tools you'd want, anything, anything you need to get up and, and playing around with it. Um, and if you're into electronics or anything like that, you've got plenty of options here to plug in um, you know, anything you want to attach to it. So it's a very cheap, very low cost device. I just want to add that uh, I was in the market for something like that a little while ago, and the, the keywords to look for is developer's kit. Yeah. Um, typically what you'll find is somebody is making a particular board or, or even just a chipset uh, to be sold as an embedded product. They often have a version of the board that has some lights and switches on it and stuff like that, so you don't actually have to build a device around it to use it. Uh, sometimes they'll also call it an evaluator board. Um, and if you want to fool around with this kind of stuff, and you don't want to like deal with more hardware past the board, you could buy these evaluator boards, and they're usually really, relatively inexpensive compared to what you'd think for what you get, uh, because it is almost a marketing tool. Uh, so, you know, I, I've seen them, like at Linux World, uh, uh, some, one, one vendor was selling them for, you know, 50, 60 bucks with the documentation and the USB port and, you know, with uh, innate, uh, you know, with, Eight segment, seven segment LED thing and switches and stuff like that. What vendor was this? Um, the name escapes me. If I heard it, I would remember. But it, it, it was the—I think it's like the only one left that's using the Z80 chip. I forgot which one. Oh. Zilog. Yeah. Yeah. Themselves, they—they they had their own thing there. I was going to say on the Zilog front, um, Zilog right now don't have. Um, do they have a, a, a device you can put Linux on now? I thought they. I don't know that you can put Linux yeah. on that particular device. Yeah, they have like the, Z, no. the EZ80. I have one of those kits. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're like 50 bucks, maybe 100 bucks. Yeah. Um, yeah but this is this is great because it's a very very cheap system that can run Linux. Has enough memory to do something useful. Has some flash, so you can flash it. Has networking. Okay. That's all you need. For another hundred dollars or so, you can upgrade to the Easy Kit. So that's a stamp. You can get the Easy Kit, which also has audio and it has a bunch of other stuff. It also has some proprietary stuff that ties into ADI's tools, but the audio alone. And it, I blogged about ADI's tools uh, a while back. Yeah. Read my blog. It's a very interesting story there. Uh, I won't go into it now. But, uh, yeah, but AD generally have done a very good job with this stuff, and I'm not trying to promote them. I don't pay to promote them. I did get this free. Um, but that's a different story. But these are very, very good. It does have a really good UC Linux team and very good documentation. But no FPUs on the back things. No, but it is a 500 megahertz chip. So <laughs> I don't care if it's emulating all my, all my floating point. Um, it's great for running a web server. Yeah, one other nice option is to get one of the uh, PDAs that runs Linux, like the, the Sharp Zorus. Um, you could buy those on eBay right now, like the original models, uh, like mine, the 5500, for like a hundred bucks these days. So not only do you have like an embedded Linux thing, but you've got like video hooked up to it and serial ports hooked up to it. And I actually have one. Um, I lent it to somebody. Right. They have a tendency, because they're very cool, they have a tendency of never coming back, but right. they are very, very cool little gadgets, yeah. 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 They also have a broken yeah. firmware updater on the Zorus, so that yes. uh, when you when you, you have to press the magic key combination when you turn it on with a compact flash card in, that happens to have the right image on it, but it will only read through that. It, it doesn't understand the fat file system properly, so if you have a slightly damaged compact flash card, you waste a Sunday afternoon custom e uh, editing the, um, the fat so that you can make it work. I've done that, and that's horrible, so. 
Yeah, <laughs> I've never heard of that problem, but they, but there is. Toby's broken comb by flashcards. Yeah, there's, there's, much... there's there's at least five different open source Linux distributions for yeah. for the Zors in particular. If you do come back and you want me to bring mine, I will. I think Jabra has one also. So would anybody just before we finish then would anybody like another time to have a kind of it's going to have to be a smaller session, or we're going to have to just kind of you know double up and share or whatever, but have a hands-on session where we get some hardware in, especially if a few of us have sort of some PDAs that are very similar that we can share. Um, that might be a cool <laughs> session to us. Yes. Yeah. I'd be we can do that also as part of an install fest. Yeah. Because we have the two rooms downstairs and it's fewer people. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.